Hello everyone. Welcome to Digital Communication Tutorials. In this video, I am going to take the second numerical on time division multiplexing. Let me read out the question first. 8 message signals are sampled and time multiplexed using pulse amplitude modulation. The time multiplex signal is passed through a low pass filter before transmission. 6 of the input signals have a bandwidth of 4 kilohertz and the other 2 are band limited to 12 kilohertz. Part A of the question says, what is the minimum overall sampling rate if all the messages are sampled at the same rate? Part B of the question says, design an asynchronous time division multiplexing system for this application. And lastly, part C says, Compare the transmission bandwidth requirements of part A and part B. Right, let us start with the solution part here. We are told there are 8 message signals and let us denote these 8 message signals as G1 of T through G8 of T. We are told 6 of the input signals have a bandwidth of 4 kilohertz and the other two are band limited to 12 kilohertz. So, I am going to now create a small table where I will indicate the signals, their bandwidths and their Nyquist rate. Let me denote G1 of T and G2 of T as the two signals that are band limited to 12 kilohertz. The rest of the six signals are band limited to 4 kilohertz. So, the Nyquist rate as we know is equal to 2 times the value of the highest frequency component and when I say bandwidth it represents the highest frequency component of the signal. So, in the Nyquist rate column I have to simply multiply the bandwidth by 2 and write the answer. Let us now move on to the part A of the numerical. What is part A? It says what is the minimum overall sampling rate if all the messages are sampled at the same rate. To understand this question, let us come back to the table and here note that there are 8 different signals and all of them are sampled at the same rate. Now, when we say they are all sampled at the same rate, that means we are supposed to now identify that particular signal which has the highest Nyquist rate and use that as the sampling rate. Because if I choose a Nyquist rate which is less than that of the highest frequency component signal, then the highest frequency component signal will experience aliasing. So, when all of them are sampled at the same rate, then you should choose sampling rate as the Nyquist rate of the signal with the highest bandwidth. So, I will write it here as if all the messages are to be sampled at the same rate, then choose the sampling rate as the Nyquist rate of that signal which has the highest bandwidth. Therefore, now I can write that if all of the messages are to be sampled at the same rate, then Fs equals 2 times 12 kilohertz. Therefore, Fs equals 2 multiplied by 12,000 equals 24,000 samples per second per message. This is very important to note. The sampling frequency of each signal is 24,000 samples per second. Therefore, the overall sampling rate is simply the sampling frequency multiplied by the number of input signals. It is 8 multiplied by 24,000 equals 1,92,000 samples per second. Right. This is the answer for part A of the question. Let us now move on to see what is part B. 
part b of the question says design a asynchronous time division multiplexing system for the given application please note the question says there are eight signals and two of them have a bandwidth of 12 kilohertz and the remaining have a bandwidth of 4 kilohertz part b of the question says to design the tdm system so i'm supposed to now identify the number of poles in the commutator and how many samples of each signal will be transmitted per each rotation of the commutator as i have previously explained whenever you are going for the design of an asynchronous tdm system select the speed of the commutator as the lowest nyquist rate of all the signals available therefore the speed of the commutator should be equal to 8000 rotations per second okay with such a commutator design let us now go back and check how many poles will the commutator have when the speed of the commutator is 8000 rotations per second then in each rotation the commutator will take one sample each from g3 of t till g8 of t and three samples each from the two signals g1 of t and g2 of t therefore there are totally six plus 2 multiplied by 3 which is again equal to 6 so 12 poles for the commutator now i'll write the design of the commutator as i said therefore the total number of poles in the commutator are 12 Right. Let me now draw the scheme for the TDM here. So, the lines that I have drawn here indicate the poles of the commutator. As we have said, there are three samples each of G1 of T and G2 of T. Let me start with G1 of T here. Similarly, we have G2 of T. Let me start G2 of T here. So, we have three samples each of G1 of T and G2 of T. Then you can write the remaining signals, one sample each from them. Right. So, this is the design for the commutator. The output of the commutator is fed to a pulse amplitude modulator and the output of that is fed to the channel this is the design of an asynchronous tdm system for the given set of signals the last part of the question is to compare the transmission bandwidth requirements of part a and part b please note part a is nothing but synchronous sampling because all of the signals are sampled at the same rate Whereas part B is asynchronous sampling because they are sampled at different rate. So let us now compare the bandwidth requirement for each of them. I will first take the synchronous sampling which is case A. Now as we have noted for synchronous sampling the sampling rate is equal to 1,92,000 samples per second. Therefore the overall bandwidth requirement for this would be fs divided by 2 which is equal to 96 kilohertz that is for synchronous sampling now when i move on to the asynchronous sampling the sampling rate here is 96000 samples per second therefore the bandwidth requirement for this would be fs divided by 2 equals to 48 kilohertz so you can now understand that a asynchronous sampling technique requires lesser bandwidth than a synchronous sampling technique well that's about the part 3 of the numerical as well right so that's about this video if you like this video kindly like and share this video and subscribe to my channel for more information on digital communication. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.